Hi everyone, it's Ashley with Kinship Vacations. I am coming at you with our um, current installment of Wanderlust every other weekly. Um, this is when I hop on Facebook Live and Instagram TV for those who are going to watch the replay on Instagram TV. And I talk about something travel related for um, about 15 minutes, maybe less, maybe more, um, but we'll try to keep it short and sweet so that you can get on with your day. Um, I had done this for a while every Wednesday and then it just fell by the wayside. So I decided it was more doable for me to do this every other week. So now we are doing it every other Friday, hence the new name Wanderlust every other Friday or every other weekly. Um, and so uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll be joining back two weeks from now and we'll be talking about a different topic. Um, <clears throat> For those who are new to the Kinship Vacations world, we're a full-service travel agency and travel concierge firm. We are made up of military spouses and veterans, and our experiences in the military community have allowed us to travel the world. There are only a handful of countries that between the seven of us we haven't touched yet, um, and those are probably destinations you don't want to go on vacation right now anyway. Um, so between all of us, we offer a wide variety of travel services. Um, we've got family travel experts, we've got girlfriend getaway experts, beer travel experts, um, history, art history, wine. Um, we can cover almost every geographic area there is. So um, if you are thinking about planning a vacation and you really want to get away to reconnect because that's really our special sauce is enabling for you to have an exceptional vacation experience where you can reconnect with the people that matter the most with you or make new friendships with people if you're traveling in a group and um, are trying to experience something that you share an interest in together, um, get in touch with us. We will match you with the right advisor for your trip's needs. And if we don't have that specialty in our group, we will refer you to another travel advisor that we trust to know because we belong to a really great community of other travel entrepreneurs where we can match you with the right services that you deserve. So that is Kinship Vacations in a nutshell. And I'm the founder and owner, the lead travel advisor of the group. Um, and I also operate another business called Travel Prolific, which is specifically for travel professionals, and it helps them to be more efficient and more um, productive in their travel businesses. That's one of my specialties. So um, if you haven't checked that out and you're a travel professional watching this, I encourage you to check it out. So without further ado, let's get into our topic and, and our this episode of Wanderlust every other weekly. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> so uh, just to let you know, the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, my husband and I took a trip to New Orleans in October, and it was actually a birthday present that I got for him. His birthday's in July, but um, we didn't want to go to New Orleans in July. We, we tend to prefer colder climates, um, so we knew it would be melting in July. And the other cool thing is that my husband is a huge New Orleans Saints fan, so I made sure to get tickets to a Saints game so that we could enjoy watching the Saints play during football season. And so we went over the weekend of Columbus Day weekend. We had the grandparents come out from California to watch the kid. Um, we've got a five-year-old daughter, and um, we neither of us had been there before, um, so we really wanted to experience the food and the culture and the flavor and the vibrance of the city, as well as go to a New Orleans Saints game. And um, my husband actually likes to write, so I asked him to write a guest, excuse me, blog post this week um, on our our blog, which is the Peregrine Kinship and that's peregrinekinship.com. Um, I can share the link to that if anyone needs it. But we posted a pub, we published that article today. It's in his, it's his perspective of receiving the gift of travel and the gift of travel in this case was a long weekend to New Orleans and a Saints game. So um, please check that blog article out to get a little bit more um, information and a different perspective on New Orleans. Today, I want to talk about my three favorite things about New Orleans um, because it is pretty much 
probably one of my top two favorite cities in the U.S. Now it's it's hard between New York City and New Orleans. Um, they're both amazing, but uh, I was just I fell in love with that city. So I wanted to talk to you about what I love about it. Um, so I'm going to give you three things I love about it. And um, then we'll finish it up and I'll join you in a couple weeks. So um, just one thing I wanted to share with you today is I, because it's almost five o'clock where I live, at least it's five o'clock over the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. Um, I wanted to make myself a cocktail and I wanted it to be sort of New Orleans based and I can't do whiskey drinks. So otherwise, you know, a cognac or a brandy or a bourbon based drink would have been, you know, ideal like a Sazerac, but I can't do it. So I made myself a um, gin with St. Germain, the elderflower liquor, uh, topped off with some soda water and a dash of Peychaud's bitters, which is a New Orleans style bitters. So if you're looking for a New Orleans, forgive me, I'm using two different screens to film two different orientations. That's why I did the first screen first. Um, so that's what I'm drinking. So cheers to the weekend. And without further ado, I'm going to talk about my three favorite things about New Orleans. And while I'm talking, I'm just going to show you like a little slideshow of our experiences there um, because we had, let me, oh, I'm doing it backwards, hold on. We had a fun time. So I'm just gonna, this is just gonna be playing in the black, black background while I talk. <clears throat> and I can share a little bit with you about it, but um, it's kind of, this is our experience. That's me and my husband. Uh, that's Bourbon Street. That's a, um, oh my gosh, what do you call it? It's the parade. They, they do, par they make an excuse to do a parade. Um, there's an, a, a real name for it in New Orleans, but they make an excuse to do a parade for weddings and funerals. And that was a LGBT parade of some sort. Um, but they're fun to see. Of course, I took pictures of the cute shoes because we were shopping. Um, that is them making a bananas foster at Brennan's. Um, this is inside the Funky Pirate Bar, a blues club in the French Quarter. Um, just kind of, that's us being goofy. <laughs> that's just a really pretty building in the French Quarter. This is the World War II Museum. This is sort of an unknown or little known fact. The World War II Museum in New Orleans is a fantastic museum. If you have any inclination to understand military history, it's a great opportunity to get immersed in World War II. That is, um, this is down by the market. This is inside a market where we had a famous muffaletta sandwich, a New Orleans specialty. This is where we ate before the New Orleans game, or Saints game. And at this particular game, Drew, Drew Brees, the quarterback, um, surpassed the all-time NFL record for um, passing yards. So we got to witness that from some really good seats. And that right there was, um, Cafe du Monde with their famous uh, beignets, the fried donuts with the powdery sugar on top. And then here is a picture of Central Groceries Muffaletta sandwich, um, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the food next. But that's just like a little snapshot of our experiences in New Orleans. I hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, so moving on to my top three favorite things about New Orleans. Let's see. Let me pull this up so you can have some visual aids. All right, number one, and this is pretty much why I travel where I travel, is the food. <laughs> it should be of no surprise to you, considering how many pictures of food I've showed you guys. Um, we loved that New Orleans had so many different flavors, um, so many different styles of food. Um, there's no shame in adding spice or fatten it up. Um, the food is just delicious um, and just diverse. So, you know, to give you an idea, we, um, we did take a food tour as part of our um, trip. And the, the food tour guide took us to a dive bar um, in the Garden District, or in, I think the East Garden District, I'm not sure what it's called. Um, and we had a po' boy, and we talked about 
um, what it means, to, what a po' boy sandwich means and why they came about and how like one of the defining characteristics of a po' boy is the type of bread. Um, so we really enjoyed that po' boy sandwich. If you don't know what a po' boy is, it's a really nice soft piece of like French bread or um, sub submarine sandwich type bread with a fry. It's usually like a fried um, seafood or fried something other on the sandwich with all the fixins and um, it was basically kind of came about when people didn't have a lot of money and they needed something to eat um, during their work break. And that's kind of what they ate. So kind of like pasties and um, mining communities, the po' boys were there for the people to eat. Um, then there's stuff like the jambalaya and the, oh my gosh, I'm like going to miss everything. Um, oh, the second place we went was a Korean fusion restaurant and they did um, like buns with uh, with Cajun and Creole infused flavors. And then the last one we went to was very seafood focused. They had like oysters and shrimp etouffee and um, just a fusion of like French cooking and Caribbean, West African, um, Italian, uh, all these really amazing cuisines from the world put together to make what is New Orleans cuisine. Um, <clears throat> and then on one of our tours, it was led by a chef and he recommended, and it was probably the best tour we went, it was of the French Quarter. Um, he recommended this cookbook, so we ended up buying it. It's Paul Prudhomme's Louisiana Kitchen. It's pretty old school, it was probably published in the 80s or the 70s, but it's pretty standard cookbook. And we've been cooking stuff out of this recipe book. Um, we've been cooking smoked sausage dressing um smoked sausage gumbo uh, my husband's been making jambalaya um yeah i mean we've just been like one of the one of the foundations of food in new orleans seems to be a combination of peppers um fresh peppers and dried peppers and like that's sort of the base of everything it seems like is just sauteing those peppers down with some dried pepper and thrown whatever meat or protein or rice or whatever in it. And then everything's very flavorful. So the food's fantastic. Um, I was really excited to try a muffaletta sandwich. So we actually tried two different muffaletta sandwiches. One was in a uh, covered market. Um, and then the other one was at the, the claimed inventors of the muffaletta sandwich, which is the central grocery company. And one thing I noticed about the muffaletta sandwiches in New Orleans is the bread is a sesame bread, which you don't always get that um, outside of New Orleans. So, you know, other than like the fabulous ingredients like the olive tapenade giardiniera thing that they have going on in the meat and the cheese, um, the sesame seed bread, I think, makes a big difference. So, um, yeah, I got to experience that. And I would just go back to New Orleans and eat my way through the city in a heartbeat anytime. So the second thing I love about New Orleans is the people. Um, everybody we met was just very uh, vibrant and full of life and um, a little different, you know, like <laughs> not everybody, but like there's something unique and special about all of the people that we met there. In other cities, they may seem a little bit crazy, some of them, um, but in New Orleans, it, it seemed like a perfect fit. And, um, I personally prefer people who are different and not necessarily adhering to the mold of society and whatever. Um, so I feel like New Orleans is a good city for me. Um, but if you think about it and I'll get to this in the next point that I really enjoy about New Orleans, the history of New Orleans is that it was a place that people were sent that were sort of the ruffians and the scalawags and the not the creme de la creme of society to kind of hold down a piece of land for whatever imperial mission there was. So, you know, the French sent their they're not so great military officers and they're, you know, they sent convicts to to help build up the city and prostitutes to keep them company and it's kind of like the story of Australia, as I understand it, where um, all the criminals from England were sent to Australia. And what's really cool about, you know, how 
New Orleans evolved over time is this very interesting mix of people and their descendants are still very interesting. And I'm not saying that the people that are there are have carried on their ancestors' um, previous profession or I don't know what how you want to say it, or their sins of society, whatever. But I feel like the fact that the city was founded on some ruffians who had to scrape together and like just kind of work together and make it right in this area that's technically under sea level, super hot most of the year, like not necessarily an ideal place to set, you know, set up a new civilization, so to speak. So the fact that these people persevered and built such a beautiful city with such a beautiful meaning in American history and such a unique collection of cultures and um, ethnicities and uh, religions and I don't know, I just, I think it's amazing. That's why I love New York City too, because you can get an experience of everything, everybody in the world almost in a place like New York City. You're never going to be bored. There is not a homogeneity, homogeneity that, you know, goes with the city. Um, it's very diverse and interesting. So I really enjoyed the people, for sure. And then with that, the history. Um, and I kind of already talked about this, but it's just kind of amazing how New Orleans was built and overcame the, the geographic weather challenges and even the most recent history with Katrina, the devastation that it brought and, you know, talking with the people that were there and how Katrina impacted them and is still impacting them over 10 years later. Um, it's a resilient, it's a resilient area. It's a resilient people and um, they take care of each other and they recognize their uniqueness and um, I just think it's fascinating and I just want to go back because I'm certain I'll learn something new <laughs> every single time um, and just be surprised and delighted every single time. So those are my three favorite things. I'm going to hide this so you can see it. Um, so I see I have a few viewers now. Do you guys have any questions that you want to ask about New Orleans or do you have any of your favorite things that you want to add to the conversation for the people that are watching the replay please just comment in the comment section i'm going to take a drink of my uh martini that i made here um while you're asking i did want to give a couple shout outs here um even though i'm a travel agent <laughs> and i feel like a lot of travel agents watching will understand this um my trap my personal travel comes last in priorities because i'm usually working on my clients so i did reach out to two fabulous travel agents on my team at the last minute to plan this um crystal eicher who i think was or is watching and dina farmer and they came they collaborated together to put it together because um they were both kind of like hmm, well it's last minute let's try to <laughs> use our resources to help Ashley out and yes I paid their fee and yes it was more than worth it because um, I didn't have to worry about the details they they set up the tours they um, made reservations for me um, they you know they sent me my itinerary I had an issue with figuring out where one of my tour guides was and I was you know panicking on the phone with Crystal at the time to try to get connected with them and she helped me out um, so I experienced working with the travel agent as a consumer during this trip, and I will never not do that for my own personal travel in the future. So if you're watching, um, follow Crystal Eicher, Serendipitous Traveler. She's on Facebook as Serendipitous, Serendipitous Traveler, an affiliate of Kinship Vacations, and she's also on um, Instagram as Serendipitous Traveler. Dina Farmer is Dina with Kinship Vacations on Facebook. And she's also Kith and Kin Travel on Instagram. So um, check them out. They're amazing. I also got to meet up with a fellow travel agent while I was in New Orleans, um, Shannon Cunningham LeBlanc, the owner of Paradise Vacation Escapes. And she's a fabulous romance travel planner. And um, she's from New Orleans. So we met up and ate at a really great restaurant before the game. And um, we walked to the game together. And uh, if 
you know, it's just kind of cool to experience the city with a local. Um, and I just love Shannon. So that was a, a nice treat for me, for sure. Let me just check and see if I got any questions. No questions so far. That's cool. Um, all right. So I'm going to just wrap it up. And normally we're doing these things. I'll do like a little destination highlight. But because I talked about a destination, my plug here is for you guys need to go to New Orleans if you haven't gone there yet. It's a perfect city to do a like three or four day weekend trip to because um, it's a lot. Um, I mean, I would love to spend a lot of time there, but you can definitely get a good taste of it in a three to four day trip. So your next federal holiday, um, consider going. I personally would go in the winter, fall, spring months because it can be really hot there in the summer. Um, and even if you're not a Saints fan, but if you do like football, consider going to the Saints football games because, I mean, I've been to several NFL football games and I honestly considered converting to a full-time Saints fan because the, the experience there is fun. The fans are good. Um, it's just a great experience. So just go uh, because you'll have a good time. Um, yeah, so that's my plug for New Orleans. And uh, my favorite things are food, people, and history. And that's probably not that much of a shock for you if you're watching and to know anything about New Orleans because that's what people mostly say they love about New Orleans. So that is it. Um, if you guys would like, I am going to create just a one page overview of my favorite, you know, restaurants, uh, spots, um, bars, a couple hotels, like just a one page overview of New Orleans. If you guys would like it, um, go ahead and sign up in, it's in the comments of this page, um, to, on our Wanderlust Weekly notification. Uh, and basically what it'll do is it'll sign you up to be notified next time we go live for Wanderlust Weekly so that you can tune in, in your email. Um, and when you send, sign up for that, I will send you that one page overview of New Orleans of my favorite spots. And um, if you're looking for somebody to plan your next trip, to New Orleans or anywhere else pretty much, please reach out to Kinship Vacations. Just go to our website, which is kinshipvacations.com. And there's a section where you can fill out your, or start filling out your trip planning form. It's right on the very top of the page. Um, it says start planning your trip. Start planning your trip, have a travel advisor take care of all the details for you. Um, and that is it. So thank you guys, have a great weekend and Happy wonderlusting.